Go. Welcome to Code Corner with Katie. Let's Let's see what's on Thinking Man's mind today. Can I use a revolving door and a means of egress? That's a great question. I don't get this one all the time but it's still something that we need to know about. So come on inside, let's take a look. I'll be basing my answer using references from IBC 2015. Just know that other editions are similar. Always consult your state and local codes as well. This is a floor plan of a famous nightclub, the Coconut Grove nightclub in downtown Boston. In 1942, it was the site of a tragic fire that helped shape our building codes especially in regards to egress door and hardware requirements. The crowd that night was estimated to be about a thousand people, well over capacity, pretty typical for a nightclub. Here's a quote from the Boston Fire Historical Society website. Amid cries of fire, fire, customers quickly moved to, toward the exit. After a small number of people exited, the revolving door at the front right here became jammed due to the crush of panicked patrons. Observers outside could only watch in horror as relatives and friends were crushed by the weight of the crowd surging against the jammed door. Revolving doors as a main path of egress are not permitted, but the IBC and revolving doors has changed a lot. Chapter 10 of 2015, 1010.1.2, egress door shall be of the pivoted side hinge swinging type, unless by exception. And exception number five, in other than group H, high hazard occupancies, revolving door shall comply with 1010.1.4.1. And so we can use revolving doors as a means of egress component. We have to make sure to meet all of the requirements as listed in 1010.141. Number six on that list is that each revolving door shall have a side hinged swinging door that complies with 1010.1 in the same wall within 10 feet of the revolving door. And all of the following three conditions must be met. Number one, revolving door shall not be given credit for more than half or 50% of the minimum width or required capacity. Number two, that each revolving door shall be credited with a capacity based on not more than a 50 person occupant load. And the third requirement, each revolving door shall provide for egress in accordance with BHMA A156.27 with a breakout force of not more than 130 pounds. They do have the breakaway leaves now, which helps so that people don't get trapped but still revolving doors cannot be your main primary egress component and they still need to comply with everything in the code. For more information and continuing education opportunities, please visit Osobloy Academy by clicking in the link in the comments below. Please click like and subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Art Consultant and or connect with me on LinkedIn for updates. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at katherine.flower at osobloy.com. And who knows, maybe your question will be on a future episode. Thanks for joining me in the Code Corner today. My name is Katie Flower, and my goal is to help you achieve safe security in the built environment.